Longines Chronoscope was a 15-minute public affairs interview program broadcast on CBS from 1951 to 1955. The program discussed news issues of the day and featured guests such as elected officials, foreign dignitaries, and other prominent figures. Guests were questioned by journalists from organizations like Newsweek, CBS, American Mercury, and the New York Herald Tribune. Program sponsor Longines Wittenauer was a watch company that donated all copies of Chronoscope to the National Archives in order to make them available to researchers and the public. Here's a program from April 1952 featuring Earl Warren, then California governor, and a presidential candidate who was running for the Republican nomination against Dwight D. Eisenhower. It's time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longine. Good evening. This is David Ross, speaking for your regular host, Frank Knight. And now may I introduce our co-editors of this edition of the Longine Chronoscope. Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Donald I. Rogers, an editor of the Herald Tribune. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Earl Warren, Governor of California. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Governor Warren, it's a pleasure to welcome you back on the Chronoscope <clears throat> program. Since you were last here, a lot of things have happened in the Republican Party. Some things have also happened in the Democratic Party, and we'd like uh, to get your opinion on them, sir. First, uh, do you feel that the rather sharp conflict developing within the ranks of the Republicans <clears throat> will be detrimental to the party when it comes to a showdown this, this summer? Well, I'm of the opinion, Mr. Rogers, that if... Uh, if we keep it on a high plane, if we talk about principles rather than personalities, uh, if we keep out the acrimony, that it will be strengthening rather than to be weakening to the party. Personally, I have tried to do that. I have talked uh, only about principles. I have never mentioned an opponent. You don't feel, do you, that uh, if Taft is nominated, the ardent supporters of Eisenhower might not vote Republican? Uh, well, I, uh, I'm not in either of those camps. I think I'll let those people speak for themselves. Uh, what you're interested in, if Warren is nominated, you expect all of them to support you. Isn't that right, uh, sir? I would hope so. I would <laughs> hope so, yes, sir. But on the, on the principal matter... And I yes. might say to you that I'm not selfish in that. Uh, if either of those gentlemen that you have, uh, have mentioned uh, were nominated, I would support them. Well, tonight, sir, uh, we're not interested in those gentlemen, <laughs> except that uh, we are interested in these principles. Do you think that, uh, on principle, that the division between the so-called uh, Middle Western group of Republicans, the nationalist group, and the so-called internationalist group, do you think that division is irreconcilable? Do you think that whichever one loses in the contest, that there will be uh, some defections from the from the from the ticket or from the party by on the other group. Well, I think uh, always where you have a sharp line of of demarcation on <clears throat> on matters of principle, you find some you find some uh, defections. Now, whether they can reconcile themselves at the uh, at the convention or or subsequently thereto uh, is a question that uh, that could not be be answered at the present uh, time, in, in, in my opinion. In, in your opinion, sir, the Republican Party, or the protest group this time, has a fair chance now of presenting a united party in November, whomever wins the, the uh, nomination. Yes, I would think that they have uh, a much better uh, chance of doing that than the, uh, than the incumbent administration. What's your opinion uh, of the one single thing that will pull the Republicans together? The one well, factor that will make them all vote Republican and, and not split. Well, I don't know that there is any, uh, any one factor. I believe it's the, it's the uh, philosophy of our, our party. I believe it's the realization of the, 
of the uh, need for uh, reorganizing our, our government, for, uh, for uh, streamlining it, for cutting out all of the, the dead wood, for uh, reestablishing uh, integrity uh, throughout the government. Well, that's more or, or less uh, uh, Mr. Huey's theory of a protest group, though, isn't it? Well, I don't believe so. I believe those uh, represent uh, sound, fundamental principles. Mm. Well, uh, you... just a protest uh, group. I think <clears throat> I think we would be before that, whether we were in or out of office. Yeah. There is, of course, there's a sound case against the present mm. administration, isn't there? I it? believe so. And, and one of the things you're doing in your campaigning is making that case against the government that, clear. That is true. That is true. So, so you have the, the, the dual purpose of first establishing the case against an administration that's been there 20 years and then explaining what you expect to do when you get power. Yes. I'm of the opinion, Mr. Huey, that uh, the Republicans uh, cannot win just on a negative campaign. I believe that uh, we cannot uh, win uh, just by pointing out the mistakes of the, of the Democrats. You see, we haven't been in power for 20 years, mm -hmm. and the people of America are going to want to know what we propose to do, and I believe that we ought to meet every problem of American life head on. Could you point up briefly, sir, uh, some of the uh, issues, some of the points in your platform, which are not duplications of the Democratic platform. Well, yes, I, I just uh, I just mentioned some of them just a few moments ago. I, b <clears throat> I believe that we ought to, we must reorganize our our government. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that uh, the Democrats can say that that they have have tried to accomplish that. Uh, that uh, I think that I think they will say it. Uh, yes, yeah. well, that may be, but I I don't believe that the fact uh, fact will support it. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, we have to be, uh, make another approach to our finances mm -hmm. in government. And uh, in that, we would be uh, very much different from the Democratic uh, Party. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't believe that we can continue to travel the road to insolvency by uh, mm -hmm. piling up a national debt year after year in, in time of peace. There's always a day of, of reckoning, and I believe that we, we have to do that. Uh, I, I believe that we, uh, I believe that we uh, can and that we, we must uh, restore integrity in government and the confidence of people in the integrity of, of their government. Uh, because of this administration being 20 years of age and all of these weaknesses developing uh, in it at this particular time, I believe it's apparent to the average person that they do not have the resiliency to, to pull themselves up yes. by their bootstraps yes. and, and do that thing. And Governor. Of course, sir, I hadn't finished, yes. but if you, want to, if you want me to go on to something else, I'd be glad to, I'd well, be glad to do it, Mr. Huey. Thank you, sir. I, I did want to make just this point. Is it fair to say that yes. your criticism of the present government is a criticism mm. just of management and not a criticism of any theory of government. Oh, on the contrary, I, 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 I want to say to you that I'm, I'm thoroughly out of, out of sympathy and always have been with the, uh, with the efforts of, of this administration, and I refer to it as the 20-year administration of centralizing all administrative power in, in Washington. I believe that they have, have weakened our institutions. I believe that they have, have uh, detracted from the efficiency and the importance of both state and, and local government. Specifically, and, what do you have in mind, sir? Uh, well, I mean, I mean simply this. Every, every program that the federal government initiates that is both a, that is a federal, state, and, and uh, local um, participation yes. uh, program the uh, the uh, intent uh, on their part is always to centralize the administration yes. of the entire program in Washington D.C. and uh, when when we do that, we're taking away from state and local government yes. the responsibility of functioning, and we're we're weakening our democratic processes. Now, on the contrary, I'm of the opinion that in such programs we ought to put as much of the administrative uh, power as we as we possibly can in the states and in the lo local communities and only do so much 
at Washington as is necessary to, to see that the purposes of the program are carried out and that the finances of the federal government are, are protected. That's and real it, administration and not supervision. That's right. Yes. That's right. And, and uh, that, to me, is a fundamental principle. I believe that if we could turn the tide in that respect, it would uh, it would have a great deal to do with the future of our country and it would it would ensure preserving the spirit of our institutions as well as the form because if we ever take away from the people in their own home communities and in their states the responsibility for administering the affairs of, of government and transfer it to Washington we are destroying the spirit of our, our institutions and maintaining the form, which many countries have done to their great sorrow in years yes. gone by. Governor, I have, as a final yes, question, sir, I'm sure that our audience would like to have your prediction as to how much strength you believe you will have uh, at the Republican National Convention. Well, I'm not a predictor as a rule, but I, I'll, I'll be very frank uh, with you. I'm interested. I'm entered in, in three primaries. I entered in in the Wisconsin primary. I got six votes from uh, uh, from uh, Wisconsin. I'm entered in the uh, Oregon primary. The election is the 16th of May. I don't know what the outcome of that will be. The third one I'm entered in is my own state of California and that has 70 votes. And, and you expect I, to do pretty well in California, I take it. I, I, I would try. I think <laughs> well, Governor, they will do all Governor right. it's been a great pleasure to have you tonight, and thank you for your second uh, appearance on the well, Carter School. Always Good delighted, Mr. Huey. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey, and Mr. Donald I. Rogers. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Earl Warren, Governor of California. <laughs>